Hello everyone, I welcome you in today's episode of Kanya Voice. Today we have with us a very special guest, Dr. Siddhan Nangia, who is currently a first year PG resident in respiratory medicine. He will be the future pulmonologist and he is currently based in Pune. Uh, welcome on this platform, sir. We welcome you and thank you for your time to share, you know, the insights of the field with the juniors. Hi, uh, yeah. Hi. Hi, Akshay. Thank you so much for inviting me. Really, really grateful. Thank you, sir. So guys, in today's episode, we will give you an insight of how a day in the life of a respiratory medicine PG resident is and more of how he will have his future plans in pulmonology sector. So uh, before we begin the session, a little about Kanyamed. So Kanyamed is on a mission to celebrate medical professionals with functional apparels and scrubs so that when you are working, like even sir is a huge fan of, you know, our apparels. So basically, whenever you are working in the hospitals, you need not to worry about the comfort and you can surely, you know, uh, raise your bar in that. So let's begin with the interview, sir. I guess many students will, you know, benefit from it. So uh, when we talk about pulmonology or respiratory medicine, how did you got the thought to, you know, choose it and yeah. what are the factors governing? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so... First of all, it wasn't one of my first choices, to be honest. Uh, like I wanted to do actually neurology, uh, for, but for neurology, you have to take medicine and then subsequently. Uh, but one of the reasons I chose this field was obviously that um, I basically, if I may say, in terms of a little bit of social media prominence that I gain, gained was because of uh, COVID. So, and the need for pulmonologists, lung disease and everything just like jumped up during COVID. And even now, there are like so many cases that you get post-COVID. And now, not even COVID, you have, you have smoking, you have like asthma. And there's so many lung diseases that are coming up every now and then. So, there is like a huge need in general for this kind of branch. So, that was one, one of my first reasons. Second was, of course, that uh, my father was a pulmonologist. So actually, uh, he just suggested me the idea because I wanted to do medicine, but doing medicine and then subsequent pulmonology would have taken me at least five years. So I wanted to also go abroad. So I mean, at least with this, I can think about get like and get a medicine degree as well. But yeah, let's see. Like that's all still under process. But yeah, with this, I don't think I regret not taking MD medicine because like pretty much you do cover the things that you study in medicine with this and this gives me the advantage that i don't have to take um like this is kind of a speciality branch so i don't have to like mm -hmm. uh like even if i don't do dm it's still okay or even if i do dm i still would have a specialist degree in the first place so something like that so that's right. one of the first reasons for like taking this branch Right. So I think this is a great balance that, you know, you get the flavor of a terminal branch as well as you get the flavor of medicine also. So that's amazing, sir. So now, uh, like, as you said that you are planning abroad and uh, whatever specialization further. So what are your plans ahead? And, you know, what is the scope in general if someone wants to know okay, what is the path ahead after this? Okay. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of, like, scopes. Like, one of my first plans was to do uh, this do MRCP to get an MD, uh, M like a medicine degree as well. And at least with that, uh, with MRCP certificate, you can work in a lot of specific countries. You can't uh, get into UK. I think you can work in UK as well, but I don't, I mean, I still have to like figure out that process. But more or less with that, at least I get the certificate. And it does give you like a good, e a decent job even in India when you certify MRCP because now it's the time where everybody wants some international degree or some sort. Right. And even if not, even if you're not planning to, even if you're not planning to go abroad, there is, uh, with pulmonology, you can easily get into critical care. There's even cardiology as a DM. Um, you can get into, there's sleep study, there's a lot of fellowships. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who do this, they simply just like uh, go on taking more and more fellowships. So you don't have to do DM per se, but you take on doing fellowships and like, yeah, just like enhancing your scope that way. But one of the most important is definitely critical care. Like, you can become an ICU specialist and all, especially with this. 
right right so i think that's amazing that you know as the horizons are very wide open and uh, obviously the need of the r currently like respiratory cases even i read today that it's now the second most common cause of death after cvs so i think that's a really mm -hmm. a great opportunity for everyone so now uh, what according to you is the biggest challenge that you are facing right now apart from the hectic residency in particularly respiratory <laughs> in i mean are you talking about the field in general or are you talking about the uh, things associated with the field uh, are you talking about the associated uh, with the field matlab maybe some procedures or something <clears throat> very challenging right now with the field okay i mean sometimes um sometimes you, it i mean indeed like with all with all the enhancing scope and like uh, sometimes it can get a very repetitive like i i mean it's just a my personal thing but i get a little bored of like uh doing the same thing again and again so same seeing asthma copd every now and then gets a little uh, boring and but i think one of the and also the one of the challenges is that a lot of people don't take this field because they assume that uh if you take this field you just go to like treat tuberculosis mm -hmm. but to be honest with you say i have a ward with uh, 20 patients then two out of 20 are tuberculosis rest 18 are all kinds of like varied kind of like pulmonary disease or other diseases that are causing like pulmonary issues so that way so apart from that challenges usually are in terms that it can definitely get hectic like um, especially with the flu season and uh, winters and seasons where there's uh, allergy season you do get like a whole uh, spike of patients in general compared to other days apart from that yes sometimes um, it's also sometimes uh, what is important is that you have to be very uh, you have to be very um, careful with the patient i mean even something like this you like uh, you would think like it's just like an end branch or like a like a specialty branch so there's only specific things that you have to do deal but sometimes even the normal patients can go bad like in like 10 seconds right. so like those things with people who like if you're not like vigilant or like don't have the basic knowledge or in general the awareness it can get like so there are a lot of such things where you know like icu problems and uh, patient getting intubated and stuff like that intubated suddenly dying so all those things are there challenges obviously um, i mean i personally love surgery so you don't get to experience a lot of like surgery surgery things but with like um, but you can find your way there's also something with the interventional pulmonology where you can uh, uh, do interventions so you can do that also as a uh, as a additional course and obviously you can even do basics of some radiology as well so yeah i think that's it i think those kind of challenges are there right. apart from that many challenges are that uh, yeah i mean yeah, i think that's all mostly challenges that i face so far in the curriculum if you ask me that <laughs> right right definitely so uh, as you said that although it's a terminal branch and you know the horizons are very nicely there uh, apart from that what's the best part of your day like maybe uh, there's a biggest challenge that you said right now the best part ki yaar matlab ye karke to maza aa gaya acha um point i think uh, doing uh, uh, icds uh, uh, so icd is intercostal drainage tube that we usually like put when there's pleural effusion pneumothorax or like that we as a first year resident you don't get a much hands on experience per se for that but uh, when you're lucky enough to like get one or two um so yeah, it's fun i think that's fun doing that to do some kind of like um some kind of like procedures on a patient that's fun i think apart from that um interesting hmm. so that then there is uh, we still like we still experiencing we still haven't done icu yet it's more of like a second year thing so maybe there we'll do much more procedures but yeah in general the basics for medicine like um, you can see uh, handling how important handling basics like sodium and potassium sometimes like uh, can be that even like a slight uh, low of sodium or slight uh, slightly low magnesium can actually cause like critical some critical problem so those things are pretty interesting i think every day there and i think one my personal favorite so i don't know uh, if you've seen it or not but my favorite show is uh, house md mm. and uh, house md is all about lupus sarcoidosis mm. a lot of those uh, inter interstitial lung diseases and a lot of like autoimmune disorders mm. so it's really fun for me to when i see a case of a pulmonology case 
where a patient is basically coming with breathlessness, but he turns out to be rheumatoid arthritis positive. So you have a uh, rheumatoid arthritis related interstitial lung disease right. with further dermatological manifestations. And um, so you can have a whole and all, like all kinds of variety of symptoms or something like a patient, patient is basically have like a very simple symptom can actually like a, show you that there are a lot many problems underneath. So I think that's something which I really find interesting because I really find uh, studying autoimmune disorders a lot. So that way. Right, right. That's amazing, sir. So obviously, you know, uh, this is something that the house feels or, you know, the diagnosing any any integrated disease is something which is really worth the joy. So now, uh, apart from this, you know, uh, we all know that you have an Instagram channel, which I'll also pin in the description. So now in the first year of residency, you know, nobody is that much efficient in managing content creation. So although your content creation is also on that topic that, you know, it's very hectic, but still, how do you manage that particular thing and any, you know, message you would like to give for the same? Yeah, I mean, I'm really bad at managing. Uh, plus, like, I would have been better if, uh, like, uh, if my living condition were a little better in terms of like, I'm very lazy. So I get like, literally like, say I come back at 10 o'clock. Now at 10 o'clock I come back. So I have basically have like half an hour to uh, shoot, half an hour to eat food, half an hour before I can, uh, and then I'm also expected to study mm-hmm. within a time. And then again, wake up at seven. Right. So with all of, all of these things. So uh, I don't get much time to like properly set up. So kind of like sometimes the quality of, even my own content, I don't like it, but it kind of goes down. So I don't like that myself, but yeah, I'm still trying. But yeah, mostly what I try to do is doing batch shoots. Like, um, I don't get a lot of ideas a lot of times. Sometimes I have to like think a lot or like um, figure out, read, do something. So then I plan like one week before that, okay, I'm going to do these things. Or I'll randomly just like do batch shoots of like some variation of some things. But yeah, now I'm trying every day to like improve a little and like try bringing new innovative stuff i mean um, plus i also get like ideas from like other people like you guys are like extremely creative like mm-hmm. i've seen like some random thing uh <laughs> you guys just like bring every day some random new meme some video and i'm surprised like how did you even think of it i'll be only i was seeing this one post of yours where you were posting this glove and there were things written mm-hmm. on it and i was surprised like why did you even think of that yeah <laughs> it's, really, it's really fun like i think you guys are like, really creative it's really amazing so <clears throat> yeah so that plus the also the funny thing is uh that's what i was joking that <coughs> the entire last year i wore scrubs uh as a first year resident i've rarely ever worn scrubs so <laughs> so shooting is the only time i actually get to wear scrubs so because you know like uh, until you're in the icu you're right. not supposed to wear scrubs right. uh, uh, anybody else who's wearing it is very doing it technically medically and infectious and disease wise and control wise very very wrong but yeah technically you should only wear scrubs when you know the ICO or like the OOT or something like that yeah. so yeah so so during shoot is the only time I actually get to wear scrubs so I think that also becomes one of the highlights of shooting that I actually like um, get to wear scrubs so, yeah that as well right right so thank you so much for your uh, compliment as well, sir. So I think that's really nice to, you know, uh, the audience would have got a great insight into the respiratory medicine thing. Uh, one quick question that if you want to change a particular thing about the branch as such, or, you know, maybe in the future prospect, what it would be, or maybe something in your UG times that you thought ki yaar ye alag hona tha. I think um, UG times, I mean, obviously, like, I think almost everybody was doing their PG in India. Uh, at some point, he's like, Ki kaash UG mein international exam de diya hota hai, USM mm-hmm. de diya hota hai, ya ye de diya hota hai, shayad kuch aur hota. But I think it's very difficult to uh, figure out what is going to happen. Like, I mean, technically speaking, you can give USM at any point in your life. You can give it right now if you want. But with the kind of things, or everything is changing. So it does become difficult. I think the only thing I would be is like, I don't know, I mean, uh, change about the branch. I don't know. I mean, I would, if I could, I would definitely change a lot of like um, medical system as a system, but not as a branch. And like, that would be like a lot of the stupid hierarchy and like right. all kinds of like ragging and all kinds of like bullshit and all kinds of like uh, people just like ego issues and all of that. Because I don't know. I mean, like, at least like, uh, we come from a time where these things don't matter. Like there are people who you, you you can have any interaction with anybody because of like you can be like 
you can be like a first year a first year mbba student you can be most you can be smarter than me so because this because you write something which like you know just like click i mean it happens mm-hmm. right. so i think the the ego in medicine is what i think you would like if i could i definitely like change it so on my part i definitely try but like yeah, well. right, right so apart from that i don't think there's like there's something like a change in the branch per se because yeah i mean the only thing i could change in the branch would be like uh, expand it so that i can also have like medicine so that like <laughs> like i don't have to get another degree for it or something so mera kaam ban jayega thoda but like yeah apart from that i don't think so right right so i think that was a really great message and you know the as it has been said that academics are the least difficult part in medical field jo uske alawa cheeze hoti hai that really makes it very hectic so uh, we definitely yeah. think that you and i can you know play our part in that particular field as well as whoever watching this can you know get benefit from it so uh, thanks again sir for your time and we really you know got a lot of information about the field as such from this interview as well so any any closing message that you want to give yeah yeah definitely thank you so much for like uh, like uh, inviting me thanks so much for asking me because uh, it's really amazing and i think what you're doing is uh, like you guys are like really amazing i was just thinking and i was talking to you and i was thinking about videos and i was thinking about scrubs and i was like like i haven't like ordered like any new color in like a long time like mm-hmm. i've only had like blue 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 and now i'm thinking i should like order like black or like red or like some new color so i think like the the kind of like uh, um creativity and like the type type of options you're giving to people i think it's amazing and i mean if i may say that you kind of like glamorize the whole part of it so <laughs> like uh, so i randomly people tell me that if i'm like what should i wear they're like don't wear anything just wear scrubs i'm like oh, okay so you kind of like carried your own fashion brand in that process so that's amazing plus like your marketing is really good so yeah keep it up right thank you thank you so much sir and on the on that note you know we have recently launched our wine for men also so you can surely try yeah. that as well yeah for sure it will be great so uh, again uh, thank you so much for your time and dear audience will uh, you know mention the instagram handle of sir in the description so surely check out and if you have any other query then you can surely connect to him as well so thank you again and uh, we hope Bye. you have a great journey ahead yeah you too have a good night thank you sir Uh thank you dear please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more